Hi everyone and welcome back. Okay, so I'm just about to start a three-part video series on Russian watercolours. Um, I've just been very kindly sent um, two sets of watercolours here and a palette and several brushes all from the St Petersburg company that as you know make the wonderful White Knights paints which I reviewed several years ago um, in fact I'll leave a link to that video in the description below because it is going to form part of this video series. Now I was contacted last week by a company called Crafty Studio and they're in Ireland and Finton, that's the name of the guy who owns the company, him and his wife, um, they've now got a website and they're selling a huge range of the St Petersburg products. And I'll also leave, obviously, I'll also leave a link to their website in the description below as well. So Finton contacted me last week uh, and apparently he's been a long-term subscriber um, of my YouTube channel. And he really enjoyed the White Knights review that I'd done a few years ago. Um, he thought it was very thorough, very honest and very fair. Um, and he sent me these products so that I could give him, and you guys of course, um, my thoughts on these products here and just for transparency um, these were sent to me free of charge um, to do the review I'm not being paid at all to do the review I don't do reviews like that and even the website link that I'm going to leave in the description below I'm not affiliated at all so I don't get any cuts or anything if you buy through that link so I have no financial interest um, in making this review at all other than the fact that I've received some free art materials and I'm not obliged to say good things or you know anything in particular about them so rest assured this will be another 100% honest review not biased at all you'll get my honest opinions on whether these are good or bad paints um, and the brushes as well these are St Petersburg brushes and um, I'll be reviewing those in a separate video actually but I will be using them to do part of the painting demonstration um, when I use these paints. So this is going to be the first part of the video series, part one, and as you can see I've got two sets of um, St Petersburg paints here. The first one um, are the Sonnet range and these are student watercolours and in the second review that I'll be making very shortly after this one I'm going to be reviewing the Ladoga artist watercolours. Now it says artist watercolours but I think they might be student quality, I'm not sure, but again we're going to test them and we're going to find that out. And as you can see there I've got a nice new St Petersburg palette here. Huge massive palette this is. Um, in fact I can't even get it all in the frame, it's that big. Uh, I think it, it holds 48 pans and um, what I'm going to be doing is in the second review, after I've reviewed the, uh, the Sonnet watercolours, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting all of the Ladoga um, paints into this palette there, because this is basically just a cardboard box with a plastic tray with the paints in, no mixing area at all. So obviously, you know, we're going to need something to mix the paints in, and uh, this palette will be absolutely ideal for that. So. Um, that's what I'll be using. But for this review, what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at the Sonnet um, watercolour set, a 21 paint set from St Petersburg. Now if we open the box, we get a nice, in fact I really like that, it's got a kind of a happy yellow, mellow yellow. <laughs> palette box that I really like that it really makes a pleasant change from just black doesn't it all the time black palettes everywhere all the palettes I've got are black I think except this one um, so that was a really pleasant surprise to actually you know see this palette um, so we've got four mixing wells in there we've got a little card there which is all in Russian I haven't got a clue what that says so I'm not even going to attempt to read that and um, we've got this nice little colour chart here um, with all the pigments named on there but interestingly enough 
uh, no pigment numbers. I'll have a look on the box in a minute and um, see if we've got any pigment numbers there. And as you can see, we've got the 21 full pans there of um, Sonic watercolours. And I don't know if the light's picking up, but they're lovely and glossy. Really inviting looking. This was the same with the White Knights paints when I reviewed them. Um, I love this kind of handmade, hand poured look to the paints. I think it's really, really nice. Um, it just adds a touch of class, I think, to the, you know, to the just the overall look of the pans. I mean, that's got nothing. To, you know, the aesthetics have got nothing to do with the quality of the paints at all. But I just think first impressions. Um, you know, I really like that handmade look. Um, I just think it looks great. Uh, again, just a personal opinion. Um, and I must just say as well about this palette box, I've seen several and I've actually handled several, um, you know, of those generic type watercolour boxes. And this one certainly is a lot thicker, a lot stronger. Um, the metal is just a, a, you know, totally different gauge to the, the general generic uh, palettes that you get. It's quite thick actually, quite a sturdy palette. So I imagine this will last you quite a long time. Now, we've only got one... Um, fold out mixing area but like I say it's got four mixing wells in there usually with pallets like this you get another um, kind of flat mixing area that folds out that way but I think this is adequate I mean the pallet that I've got has got one of those fold out sections on it there but maybe nine times out of ten when I do a painting I only ever seem to use these four mixing wells anyway so I think that's kind of adequate amount of space really for mixing for me personally you might like um, more mixing wells and things like that um, but I'm certainly in favour of this palette um, let's put it that way I think it's um, it's all you need but it's all I need um, and I can't really see um, any need for anything more if I'm if I'm doing a, a very large painting uh, or something like that I'm going to get out a food display tray you know white plastic tray so I've got more mixing area but generally speaking I can manage, you know, with just four mixing wells of that size for most paintings that I do. Okay, so after we've done the first impressions, I think the next thing we ought to do is um, swatch these out. We'll take a look at the colours and um, then what we'll do, we'll do a nice little painting with them and really get to understand all the foibles of the paint and um, just see how they really perform. Okay, so let's get swatching. Okay, so my first mistake was to apply white paint over ink that hadn't dried properly. So what's happened is, you can probably see it there, that the white paint has taken on a bit of a grey tint. Obviously not the fault of the paint, it's the fault of me for applying it too quickly over white ink. Um, but the paint itself is absolutely fine, but I can report that if you're looking for something that's like white gouache, this won't be the paint for you. It's very transparent. The white colour is ideal for glazing, but it wouldn't be any good for pure white highlights or anything like that. The rest of the colours are also very, very transparent compared to the White Knights Artist Quality paints. And something else I noticed with these immediately was just how easy the pans re-wet. Very reminiscent of the White Knights Artist Quality. Um, they really do feel the same, um, you know, when you re-wet them, but they're all very transparent. Okay, so that's the swatches done, and wow, <laughs> aren't they good? I mean, just looking at them, the colours are strong, vibrant, and very transparent as well. I was very impressed with how transparent these were. For those that like transparent palettes, I think these are worth checking out. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not fussed with transparency or opaque colours. In my regular palette, I use quite a lot of opaque colours. Probably a 50-50 mix actually of opaque and transparent. But I know some people are very fussy about their colours, only using signal pigments and things like that and they like everything to be transparent. Well, if that's the case, can't guarantee the single pigments but I can certainly guarantee the transparency of these. They really are lovely paints in that respect. Now then, prices. We haven't talked about prices yet. Um, now this set here with 21 um, two and a half millilitre whole pans plus a really nice very sturdy pallet box um, comes in at 20 pounds and 49 pence and that's on the crafty studio website which as i mentioned before i'll leave links in the description below 
Now then, light fastness. We do have some details on the box here. If I hold that close, you might want to just pause the video and just check that out for yourself. Um, basically, it says three stars is high light fastness, two stars medium, and one star low. Now, I've had a quick look through here, and I can only find three pigments there which are just rated with one star. Um, and that's the orange, which is a shame because I really like that colour and was going to include that on my palette, but it's only one star. Um, the other one is the violet light and the other one is the violet deep. So both of the violets there have low light fastness. And the majority of them are kind of three and two. So all in all, I think it's par for the course really for any sort of pre-made set of watercolors. You're always gonna get that mixed bag um, of different light fast ratings in there. So no disappointments there really. Um, like I say, it's kind of par for the course. Now just a quick word about some of the colours. Um, for those of you that remember my White Knights review, I mentioned about the yellow ochre. In this set it's called Gold Ochre. Um, but I spoke about the yellow ochre in the White Knight set being very, very nice compared to a lot of the yellow ochres that I'd used in the past. It's had sort of a nice warm golden glow to it, particularly when you applied it in light washes and the bottom area of skies and things like that to get that nice warm glow in the sky. It seemed to have much more of a natural looking sunny glow to it than other yellow ochres. And this one, I'm pleased to say, is the same. So obviously it's um, it's more than a single pigment colour because they're using the earth pigment of yellow ochre and I'm sure they're using a nice sort of pale vibrant yellow in there to give it that kind of nice golden glow. Um, but nonetheless, it really is a lovely colour, that one. And we haven't got any cadmiums in this set, although the yellow medium and the yellow deep really do represent the cadmium colours of cadmium yellow medium and cadmium yellow deep really, really well. Um, but like I say, they're not the true cadmium colours, even though we haven't got pigment numbers, um, they're not the true cadmium colours because these aren't opaque at all, they're very transparent. And if they had been cadmium, I'm sure they would have been advertised as such. And as I mentioned during the swatching, um, the zinc white is quite transparent really. Even though, I'll just hold this up close for you so you can see that better. Even though um, the ink was still wet when I applied the, the paint, first of all, um, after I let it dry and applied the other colours, I did go over that again with the zinc white several times and it's not really covered the black over very well at all. In fact, if I just run that along, if you look at the black line, you can see just how transparent these colours are. You can still see the black line quite clearly through most of those colours there. And like I say, even the white. Um, you're either gonna love that or hate it. I love it because it's great for glazing. Um, if you want those really bright white highlights, obviously you're gonna use something like a titanium white or a white gouache or something like that. And it's great to see they're putting the Russian green or green as it's just called, or in this case, they call it green deep. Um, that really is one of my favorite all time greens ever from any manufacturer. I love this green, this shade of green. It's a really nice natural landscape green. I think it's worthy of any landscape painter's palette, that one. So it's great to see it included in this set. Now I've already done um, a little painting with this, with these. I'll just bring it in and quickly show you. Um, this was done using the Sonic watercolours and there will be a separate video showing this painting demonstration and it's also a full length video um, tutorial over on my Patreon channel. But just a quick um, sneak peek at it now, just so that you can see how nice the colours actually worked. Um, they're nice and transparent. The black had fantastic coverage. I only needed a couple of coats of that and the white paper was completely blacked out. Um, I think there's a nice luminosity and vibrance um, to the colours. They blended well together. There was no funny business with them at all. They all seemed to blend well together, mix well. No problems at all.
And I've done a few very loose paintings, which I'm not going to show on here. They're just kind of rubbish, just practicing really, just to get to know and try and understand the paints a little bit better. And I can honestly say that even just this short period of use with them, um, I can honestly say that these are amongst the top of the top when it comes to student watercolours. You know, if you were to categorise student watercolours into three grades, um, you know, the high end, the middle ground and the bottom end, these definitely fall into the high end uh, quality of student paints. They really are fantastic. In fact, some of the best student quality paints that I've used, and I've used quite a few brands over 30 years of watercolour painting, um, Cotman, De La Rowney, Aquafine and their Georgian range as it used to be called, Arteza, Van Gogh, Reeves and many others. Um, and compared to all of them, the quality of these really does shine through. It really does. Um, now, with that said, um, you know, this is going to be an honest review. And, and like I mentioned at the start, if I find anything wrong here, I'm going to mention it to you. There was a couple of little things that I did find. Now, the first one is, I don't think... Now, the, uh, the, again, this is not really a problem. It's probably just a case of I couldn't actually find the answers I was looking for. But... I couldn't find whether or not you can actually buy these open stock, you know, as individual pans. I know you can with the White Knights range, um, but I couldn't find um, any details about these being sold separately. I'm sure you can, but I, I couldn't find them, so they're not readily available in that respect. Um, and the same with tubes as well. I'm, I'm very uncertain if there's a tube um, paint made of these. Again, I couldn't find information on that at all. So just assuming, it might be wrong to assume, but just assuming that maybe you can't buy these in open stock or tubes. But like I say, don't take my word for it. Um, I might be totally wrong on that. But I did look and I couldn't find any information on it. So it's like I say, I just assumed that maybe they aren't available yet. I mean, as of the time of making this video, a few months down the line, maybe, you know, these will be available in open stock and so will a tube version as well. And the other little detail which um, well I wouldn't say it's a problem but there's no pigment number on here but I guess student quality paints um, you know students are not really interested in pigment numbers are they they're just looking for a good quality paint at an affordable price and that's exactly what these are you know they, they really are a, you know typical sort of St Petersburg paints you know really high quality at a really good price really good affordable price so that kind of outweighs you know the fact that we haven't got pigment numbers here or anything I mean the fact that they're student quality paints we know that they're not going to be using real cadmiums and cobalts and all that kind of stuff you know we're going to get the synthetic derivatives um, which kind of leads me on to the next issue that I had with these um, and again, this is a personal thing, you know, it's not a problem with the paints, it's a personal thing. Now, there are certain colours, not just with White Knights or St Petersburg, but certain colours with any manufacturer's range, which I don't particularly like, and that's the Thalo colours, purely because they're palette wreckers, you know. If you use them several times on the same palette, eventually, you know, like this colour here, for example, which is, they just call it blue, but it's, it's clearly a Thalo blue. Um, your palette is going to end up kind of this colour, kind of the middle area of this blue swatch here, after a very short space of time. Um, and here's, I'll, I'll insert a few pictures actually, because after painting the, the bird painting there, um, I used black and the blue, and they absolutely stained my palette to a point where if I hadn't have cleaned it with an abrasive cleaner, the palette would have been ruined to be honest. You wouldn't have been able to mix um, light, you know, lemon yellow washes or glazes on top of, you know, a palette that's stained blue. You, you know, your washes are just going to look green. So, but again, I mean, it's a good thing because that is kind of testimony as to how strong some of these pigments are. But here's a few pictures of uh, what my palette looked like after just using very small amounts of blue. You can see there, there's still a few droplets left on the palette, but um, underneath all that, you can see how badly stained that is. In fact, I've just made um, another video on how to restore your palettes and how to remove these stains, and that'll be posted just after this. 
I know dirty palettes are cool, <laughs> I know that, but this is beyond cool, you know. This is ruined, you know, this is ruining your palettes. So that was just one of the things, you know, I noticed with these colours. But like I say, it's testimony to them because they are very strongly pigmented. For student watercolours, you cannot grumble about anything with these. Um, you'll notice as well they're very, very bright. Now I have heard that some manufacturers put certain brighteners in their paints to make them appear you know nice and bright and everything and that usually goes on you know with the student quality paints uh, when they're using synthetic derivatives of pigments and things like that you know they put brightness in them to make them bright and these are certainly very bright um, I'm not saying using brightness is a good thing or a bad thing it just makes the paint bright so in one respect it's a good thing I kind of suspect that they may have been used here because the paints are so lovely and vibrant and bright which I think is a good thing because it was one of the first things that kind of hit me as I was swatching them out. I just thought, oh, these, these paints are really, really bright. You know, they're kind of leaping off the page. And the next thing you notice is just how transparent and vibrant looking they are. And like I mentioned earlier, they re-wet just like White Knight's um, Artist Quality paints. You know, really easily. You only have to touch the brush on there, damp brush on there and your brush is loaded with pigment. They wet up really easily, they're lovely and creamy, lovely and smooth, and they run out really well. Uh, I mean, the Ultramarine looks a little bit patchy there because I went over it twice, and this is very cheap paper. And you go over this paper twice and it kind of bobbles up, so the Ultramarine does run out nice and smooth. I've used it on other papers, and it's actually a lovely colour, a lovely version of um, Ultramarine, that one. But they all run out really, really smoothly, Again, I got a little bit of um, run back there. That was my fault, not the, faint, the, the fault of the paints. That's, that's my fault for using too much water there. But you can see all the other colours, they run out really smoothly. So all in all, other than the fact that we haven't got pigment numbers, we're uncertain about open stock. Apart from that, I think these really are a fantastic range of paints you know the quality is there I mean that's clear to see as soon as you use them the quality is there you know I mean we're all sort of currently working with um, two choices of watercolors at the moment aren't we student quality or artist quality there doesn't seem to be anything in between but if there was if for example you know an intermediate quality of paints existed I think you could safely put these um, into that bracket they do seem to be, um, dare I say, you know, nearer an artist quality than a student quality. You know, they are that good. So I'd kind of put them somewhere in between, to be honest. But like I say, the fact that there's no open stock or anything like that might let them down a little bit. But I hope I'm wrong about that, I really do. Because I would like to, you know, at these prices, I would like to buy more of these pans, you know, to replace them as I use them up. I wouldn't be replacing any of the thalo blues there and we've actually got three of them um, the bluish green the blue and the um, azure blue and the emerald green as well that's a bit of a stainer and the lamp black so they're they're colors i wouldn't replace but all the others um well there's my old enemy there carmine that didn't fare too well um on a light fast test i've done with the white knights range but i have actually heard rumors that white knights have changed the pigment I don't know if that's true or not, it's just hearsay. Um, I mean, the only true test really would be to do another light fast test on these and see how they fare. But even if Carmine was 100% light fast, I would rather have crimson alizarin anyway. I find it a more useful colour um, for mixing the colours that I use for landscape paintings anyway. But I mean, the Carmine in itself, I mean, look at it, it's a lovely colour, lovely and strong, really vibrant, as they all are. So yeah, I mean, maybe if anybody knows if these are available open stock, please leave a comment below. I'd be interested to uh, hear about that. And something else I really like about St. Petersburg paints is the fact that they don't overhype their products. In fact, they barely hype them up at all. They're a very humble company, I think, because, you know, even the advertising pitch on the back here um, is all true. Um, you know, it says watercolours, sonnet are specially designed for aspiring artists. These paints are produced on the basis of the latest formula and have the intensity, transparency and purity of a colour, which I totally agree with. They really do. That's absolutely spot on. 
and it says you know they, they blend perfectly and they're easily taken on the brush you know which I've already explained yes they really are easily to re-wet and get on the brush these pigments you know you're not scrubbing away at them at all and they just put it there in small print on the back and um, it makes you kind of trust the company doesn't it when they're not giving you all this nonsense you know you know they're just saying exactly what you're getting nothing more nothing less and um, I like that you know about St Petersburg paints so conclusion would I recommend them well I think you've already guessed that haven't you of course I would most definitely I would and I'm really looking forward now to um, to the next review actually of testing these out um, since the start of this video obviously I've done some painting and some swatching and there's been a few days in between and I did actually look through um, the catalogue that was sent to me by uh, again Crafty Studio I'll put their card there so you can you can see it and um, it did say in there that these are actually they are actually as it says on the box they are actually an artist's grade watercolour but they don't use the the toxic pigments like cadmium and you know all of the toxic pigments like that so I'm really really looking forward to testing these out because the White Knights artist quality watercolour paints really do take some beating and so do these um, so I re I'm really interested to see which kind of category these fall in you know are they right up there with the artist quality or are they nearer the student quality but judging by White Knight's honesty, if they're saying these are artist watercolours, I bet they are, and I bet they're fantastic as well, so I'm looking forward to that review. And that'll be coming up after this video, maybe next week, or just in a few days' time. And I'll, what I'll be doing, I'll be putting all of the St. Petersburg videos that I've made, the White Knights, the Lagoda, um, the Sonnet, the Lightfast Test, all of that, onto one playlist on my YouTube channel. So hopefully it'll be a really good comprehensive review guide there for you, um, you know, to compare all these colours. I will make a final comparison video as well, testing all three together. OK, so I just want to say a big thank you to Crafty Studio for sending me these art supplies. It's been an absolute pleasure to test these out. Um, they're really enjoyable paints to use, as are the, the Sonic brushes as well, which were sent to me top class brushes in fact I even ordered some more I enjoyed using them that much but I'll do a separate review on the brushes at a later date um, but yes it's been a joy to actually use these paints I've really enjoyed using them so thank you very much um, Crafty Studio for sending these um, and for all of you out there watching I'll leave the, the links to Crafty Studio in the description below like I say they're carrying a, a good comprehensive range of St Petersburg products now so you might want to go there and check these out they're all at good prices as well okay so that's my review of the Sonic watercolours so I hope that was helpful to you thanks very much for viewing any questions just fire away and as always take care everybody and I'll see you in the next one bye for now